Good morning, Sault Ste. Marie and Al Goma. Welcome to Special Report for Friday, August the 7th. We made it to the end of the week. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much to KC Securities for your sponsorship. I'm Chris Oldcorn and I'm here with Daniel DePratt. And uh, yeah, we're just gathering all our papers there as we were coming right yeah, to we got us. Tons we got of stuff lots today. of stuff going on here. <laughs> A lot of things. Uh, very interesting. Come, we'll talk in a sec about Trump and aluminum tariffs mm -hmm. again, because apparently our aluminum is a danger to American uh, safety and We're going to go through this again two months yeah. before their election, right? Yeah. Well, Trump needs election. to do anything to look to boost it up his yeah. base right now. Uh, but we will be carrying Doug Ford's announcement today. Now, today it'll be Christine Elliott, uh, Deputy Premier Minister of Health, and Stephen Lecce, who's the Education Minister. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, the press conference today is going to be at 10 a.m. So we're going to be back at 10. Uh, to carry the press conference live and then at 1 p.m. we're going to repeat the 10 a.m. press conference. So there's a special special report at 10 a.m. this morning and then that special special report will be played at the special report time normally at 1 p.m. as well. That's, so, a, that's yeah, a lot of special. That's a lot of special reports. Today is a very special day because of that. It's, yes. it's a super special Friday we'll call it. <laughs> So, uh, so the way it normally is, is normally the morning show is actually repeated at 10 a.m., the show that That's we're doing right, right now. Yes. So you're not going to see that repeat at 10 a.m., so you're just going to see Special Report Live with the Doug Ford, and then the regular, it will be played in its regular time slot as well. Right. Okay, now that we got all the special specials out of the way, now we got another special thing going on. Trump has imposed a 10% tariff on certain aluminum again. Uh yeah. Yes. This has happened before. Um, seems a little deja vu. Uh, mm -hmm. He's only been in four years, but he's, this is the second time. Right. Uh, before he did it on steel and aluminum. Aluminum. This time he just did a 10% tariff on what's called non-alloyed unwrought aluminum from Canada, which basically means raw aluminum. Uh, yeah. Uh, so he made the announcement at one of his uh, campaign stops uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, this blindsided the Canadian government. They were not expecting this. This came out of pretty much left field, uh, but uh, the U.S. Trade Representative uh, to Canada, said, who's Robert Lighthizer, mm -hmm. said it's absolutely necessary to reimpose the tariff on Canadian aluminum imports to defend the U.S. aluminum industry. And then Trump said, Canada was taking advantage of us as usual. I signed it because the aluminum business was being decimated by Canada. Very unfair to our jobs and our great American workers. Yeah, it's kind of hard to read a Trump quote because it's not really real sentences. And it's um, true. And it, yeah, that yeah. sounds pretty accurate when you're quoting. It. Yeah, that's you have to double take on that because you're like, mm, that's yeah. not really how the language works. But yes. okay, not to be too tough on the American president to speak in full sentences. Um, okay, so uh, they did say earlier in the summer that they may put tariffs on aluminum, and Trudeau just responded that if they did, then obviously we'd be doing dollar for dollar um, mm -hmm. tariffs again. That's uh, Christ Christina Freeland last night confirmed that the, we will respond with the dollar to dollar tariffs. Like so, before. Yeah, and once again, they're going to be targeted at states with uh, Republicans who are in power. So yes. obviously, they're going to go after the uh, whiskey industry in Tennessee, you know, Jack Daniels, all of the yes. famous American yeah. whiskey. Exactly. They're going to target those. Yeah, Republican they nailed them last time. Them. Yeah, so they're going to do it again this time. So yeah. you're going to see uh, prices. Uh, it, go up slightly on certain American products because of that, because uh, that's what happens when you put a tariff on. It actually increases the cost of goods mm -hmm. uh, to people in the country that you're actually, <laughs> that actually is putting in the tariff. Um, this is something the Trump administration has not understood from the beginning, that putting a tariff on a product is actually not really penalizing the country that it's coming from. You're making your own citizens pay more yes. for the exact same product that they were getting before. And now you're just getting the, you're just getting retaliatory tariffs dollar for dollar. Yeah. So and, and, just, you yeah, know, and, Canada's going to continue to do the same thing they did last time. Yeah. So. I mean, last time... Uh, Trump did this because we're renegotiating the whole NAFTA deal right. and he was trying to get some leverage in there and then took it out and NAFTA's barely been in for... I think July uh, yeah. 1st is when they are around Yeah, there. like it hasn't even been in they, fully implemented yeah. long at all now and that was all part of in NAFTA being taken out, with the, which is that now the USMCA agreement. Yeah. But um, yeah, so we'll just see what happens there. But it's going to be definitely an interesting time over the next little while because... Trump is behind in the polls in America, and he mm -hmm. has to do whatever he can to try and bolster his support, particularly in certain states that are really close. Because, like last time, was it seven states and fifty-five thousand votes decided the presidency? Very, very close because of yeah. the electoral college. So he, you know, he can't lose five thousand votes in certain states, or he won't. Even Michigan is an example. Yeah, yeah Michigan's a prime right. example. Yeah, yeah. yeah Michigan. Yeah, he's got to take Florida, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Like these are must-win states for him. Yeah. Uh, and he also has to make sure he doesn't lose support in places like Tennessee um, and Alabama and places like that, which actually are, use a lot of aluminum and have aluminum plants yes. there. So. And, and if they have mail-in ballots for the election, you have to watch for fraud. Oh, yeah. Which, speaking speaking of, fraud, of fraud, excellent segue. Yes. Locally, we have a fraud <laughs> Local warning. fraud. Not American election fraud. No, exactly. Um, so recently, officers re have received two complaints regarding frauds associated with a loved one involved in a motor vehicle collision. So in the two complaints, victims were contacted by an individual claiming to be a grandchild who was involved in a collision, and they claimed to need more than $3,000 to get out of trouble. The victims were instructed to put the money in bubble wrap and drop it off in a location in Sault Ste. Marie. Seniors are being targeted. Uh, so this, again, is this grandparent-type fraud thing that we see a lot where they you know i'm in jail you need to bail me out that kind of thing um yeah. so you know if someone did, does contact you requesting money make sure you know that you, you don't especially if they're telling you don't tell anybody right make yeah. sure you report this and don't and share your information make sure you recognize the voice exactly like yeah. you know like it, but this is the this is why they yeah. target the seniors right and yep. you know and by the time sometimes the banks a bank teller might notice when they go to withdraw this money and they'll actually stop it. Yeah. Right? So yeah. some of the bank tellers or I don't know I mean, call I, them that anymore, member service, whatever they are called, they actually will catch that because, you know, they have some training in there. Yeah, because I'm, I'm pretty sure my my debit card has a limit of, I think, $2,000 a day I can take out of a machine or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, there is a limit set in there uh, automatically on your account. Um, yeah, and this is pretty low. Like, don't, don't go after seniors that's just despicable i mean yeah. to take yeah. their hard-earned money that they worked all those years for i know is is just not that's just horrible uh okay david's tea we've talked about this before several times david's mm -hmm. tea largest tea chain in canada uh served by uh, a fellow in montreal and when COVID 19 happened they had obviously had to close all their stores mm -hmm. however um they had been shifting to more online business um but when COVID 19 happened that just decimated the company because uh, the revenues just tanked, yeah. they couldn't pay the rent. Uh, so they went into what's called the Companies Creditors Arrangement Act, which is basically what you call bankruptcy protection. Uh, they have decided to only open 118, sorry, 18 stores across Canada and close 186 um, that they had. So they're gonna they're going down uh, significantly. And the David's Tea uh, location in Station Mall here in town is not one of the 18 stores opening. Right. Um, they so when they they're just going to have the 18 stores and all the others they're going to obviously have to negotiate it out of their agreements in those locations. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, if you are a David's Tea fan, well, you'll yeah. you'll still be able to get you their get products online, online um, and they were already shifting to that business model. Uh, but in Canada, that's what's going to be yeah. happening. They do have some stores in America. They're also in bankruptcy protection there. And they haven't decided there mm -hmm. uh, how many stores will remain open if they leave any open. And because their footprint in America is not that big, I think they only have about forty stores in total across the entire country. Yeah, I used to go to the David's Tea here in, in Sault Ste. Marie. Nathan and I like to get yep. some tea and stuff. And usually when we would go there, it would be pretty steady. Um, and here we go. Here's another store now gone on the Station Mall, and I have not been in there since uh, you know the pandemic started, and I don't know what's left. You know, yeah, it's, was, it's dire yeah. straits in the mall for itself as it is. Right? Yeah, I was there actually last night. Stores. Yeah, I was there last night at the, what's the place that has all the smelly stuff, candles. Bath and Body Works? Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, the one that Nathan doesn't like because of the scents. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend loves that one. Um, oh. Unfortunately. And, but we had a special coupon from the last time we were there that we can't not use the coupon. Oh. We saved $5 yeah. if you spent 20 on, on a candle or something. Oh, or... yeah. You can't let one of those coupons go to waste. And then they put another coupon in the <laughs> bag. Thanks. Anyways, uh, so I was there, and then I popped over to Kohl's and bought a book. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we were there last night. Um, a lot of the stores are, are greatly reduced in hours. Some are mm -hmm. still operating at full mall hours, but most, we were there just around 6, mm -hmm. and some of the stores were closing at 6. It was some the mall itself at seven. quiet? Like, was... It was fairly quiet, yeah. yeah. Um, I've been there a few times to the Dollarama mm -hmm. uh, and H&M, and uh, it was somewhat busy but nothing like it ever was before I, it's nowhere near what it was before right. and a lot of the big draws there are not there as well like you can't go to the movies which yeah, is a big draw in there you know that draws you know, hundreds of people every single night 
uh, when it is open and that's just not pulling people in. Yeah. So a lot of, one of the reasons you have like big stores like that is to draw them in so you'll go they to other stores. They get in and then they go into the other stores, yeah. yeah. So. Okay, okay uh, so we're gonna take another uh, so trip down weather memory lane. We are, we're gonna see if the fog is here this morning uh, on their wireless.com, wirelesscom.ca <laughs> camera. Oh, there is some fog, although it's, but it's a not bit as more. foggy as yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday, that was just yesterday like we couldn't a see cloud. anything. So yeah. yes, this is sponsored by wirelesscom.ca. Check them out on their website. That will lift again, kind of like it did yesterday. It's gonna burn off. We're gonna warm up. Uh, let's see here. Let's look at our records for today. 32.6 is our high in 2001, and 1.1 1 .1 is our low in 1948. 1948 was a cold year. Uh, but we're not going to see those temperatures, but we will see some heat. Uh, so I'll have that with your regional temperatures and your three-day forecast in the weather studio when we come back from this break. So make sure you stay tuned. We'll be right back. What's life without making a few mistakes down the road? A few sharp turns and doing things for what we adore but might regret later. A trip to Chuck's Roadhouse isn't one of them. With melt-in-your-mouth AAA steaks, buttery lobster tail, half-priced apps after 9 p.m., a nice cold draft with all your Roadhouse favorites. Chuck's Roadhouse. Food the way it ought to be. Priced the way it used to be. message from the Government of Canada. In your home, lighting is just as important as style. With PowerView Motorization from Hunter Douglas, you can schedule your shades to light up the room. Create privacy, or both, automatically. No hands required. So your shades will always be in the right place at the right time in style. And it's only from Hunter Douglas. And welcome back to Special Report for Friday, August the 7th. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, the special report is brought to you by KC Securities. Thank you very much, KC Securities. Now, today, uh, one of our members of our news team here is in Toronto uh, having heart surgery. So, Craig, we wish you well, and hopefully everything goes well today, and we will see you back here next week. Okay, now we're going to go over to Daniel for the three-day forecast. What's going on there, bud? Thank you very much, Chris. Good morning, everyone. A reminder to uh, go to sueonline.com, check out the Stay Connected area on the sidebar, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and subscribe to us on YouTube as well. We're getting near a thousand subscribers there, so you can find it all there at sueonline.com. Okay, radar. Not a whole lot to really talk about. High pressure here, high pressure is over. It's right over top of us. Now these clouds that were here yesterday are cleared out. We've Now, here's the thing. We've got a change coming on the weekend. So this is going to move in, and we're gonna see this low pressure. Sunday and Monday is what's going to be the tricky one. That's where we're going to see a change by Sunday and Monday and thunderstorms, maybe some winds coming in. As you can see, zoomed out a little bit on the screen there. Right now, we are good for the next few days with some high pressure though, however. So we will uh, get into your regional temperatures here. Your expected highs for our 
northeastern Ontario region today are 29 in Thunder Bay, 25 in Wawa, 27 in Timmins, as well as here in Sault Ste. Marie and Sudbury, and then 26 in Elliott Lake. So a couple degrees above seasonal, nice day. Overnight lows won't be getting too low. 19 in Thunder Bay, 16 in Wawa, 17 here in Sault Ste. Marie, uh, 15 in Elliott Lake as well as Timmins, and 16 in Sudbury. So a little bit of relief from the heat during the day, but uh, we're not going to get down to uh, too cold of a temperature for this time of year. So we will be at seasonal. Currently outside, we're sitting at 17. The sun is out burning off that fog that you saw on our camera. We're going to get up to a high of 27 with a humidex of 31. So the UV index will be high. Uh, let me double check. We're looking at 8 as your UV index. So sunscreen is recommended as well as hats. 11 kilometers to the south are your winds, so that is a warm breeze. You're not going to get a cool breeze today. Moving on into your three-day, Saturday will be enjoyable as well. 27 degrees, and we'll see a mix of sun and cloud. Now, there's a 60% chance of showers late in the afternoon, uh, and then as well as overnight, because you can see on the Sunday, this is where we're going to see the chance of a thunderstorm and some showers move in with a high of 26. The humidity will still be around a little bit. Low of 17 on Sunday. Monday as well, looking like we're gonna see that mixed bag, as I like to mention, 26 degrees and a low of 16. Now that's, you're gonna have uh, some sun coming up after that in the seven day to start your work week. So uh, when we come back later on in the show, I'll have the seven day as well as the weather watcher. It'll be a video today. So I'm gonna send it back over to Chris. Thank you very much, Daniel. Looks at least like tomorrow's going to be an okay day before we uh, hit Sunday and Monday. Uh, okay, um, the uh, Sault Ste. Marie Police Service has uh, given us a public assistance request. Um, there's a missing person. Uh, he's 56 years old. His name is Ken Caitlin Jr. Uh, they've been investigating this since July 27th. Uh, the, his family and the police are concerned for his well-being. He was last seen either July 4th or July 5th. Uh, in the Carpenter Lake area, east of Sault Ste. Marie. He has not contacted his family since July the 7th, and he told them that he was near the New Brunswick-Quebec border, but he is known to frequent Sault Ste. Marie, Laird Township, Carpenter Lake area. Uh, he could be traveling east towards Prince Edward Island. He's described as being five feet tall, 11 inches, and also weighing about 165 pounds with short brown hair. He, and now the photo you're seeing on there, he's actually slightly thinner than the photo that you're seeing. And then he's also, uh, his vehicle is a 2011 Ford Edge with an Ontario license plate CBHA792. If you have any information with regards to um, Ken Gatling Jr., Jr., please contact Detective Constable Melanie Roach at 705-949-6300, extension 262. That's Melanie Roach, 705-949-6300, extension 262. We'll be right back after the break. Ontario established a $100 million affordability fund to help Ontarians who don't qualify for low-income conservation programs ease the burden of their electricity bill. Whether you rent or own your home, as long as you pay your electric bill, you could qualify. There are three levels of support available. The first is a home energy kit with upgrades like smart power bars and LED light bulbs. The second includes Energy Star appliances that help keep things cool during the hot summer months. The third is for electrically heated homes so that your power bills don't break the bank during those long Canadian winters. Plus, all upgrades including installation are completely free of charge. Visit affordabilityfund.org or call 1-855-494-FUND to find out if you qualify.
and welcome back to Special Report for Friday, August the 7th. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. I'd like to thank KC Securities for their sponsorship. Okay, we had another good day yesterday for COVID-19 here in the province. Once again, we were below 100 new cases with 95 cases and only one death, uh, which is, uh, those are very good numbers compared right. to what we've seen in the past. Yes. Uh, this makes the longest stretch with fewer than 100 new cases per day since March, mm -hmm. which was a Basically, when we, we started no the lockdown, testing, then. yeah, hardly and, any testing. Yeah, and the testing numbers at that point were like twenty five hundred a day, and now we can do like upwards yeah. of close to forty if we need to. Right. Um, Fifteen of our public health units recorded absolutely no new cases at all, and twenty nine of the thirty four health units reported five or fewer cases. Um, we did twenty six thousand tests, which is fantastic, um, which was up from seventeen thousand the day before. Uh, however, the continuing trend is we are seeing you know, over 60% of the people testing positive mm -hmm. under the age of 40. Uh, there's only 71 people in the hospital right now. Uh, 29 of those are intensive care, and we are actually now down to 13 people on ventilators, which is also a number we haven't seen since back in March. Yes. And this is actually this is actually pretty good, given the fact of when we started stage yes. three. Yes, Toronto is now in stage three for a yeah. week, week and or so now. So. It, uh, for, for what for how far we are into stage three we actually haven't seen a spike mm -hmm. uh, which by the way has happened in when other countries and areas have gone to a, something similar to our stage three yeah um, they've seen a spike in cases they did. we saw a slight spike where we had a couple days over 200 but then, then it then popped it that down off. to sort of like the low 100s and now we're yeah. steadily below 100. our rolling five day average right now is 95. this is the first time actually since march that our rolling five-day average has actually been below 100. So good, things have good. been going very well for us in stage three across the province. Uh, and maybe this is going to be sort of for, uh, foreshadowing that we might not see a big spike in the fall. Let's hope. Uh, let's hope right? that so this, is, uh, let's hope that this is a trend that continues and uh, yeah. we'll be able to sort of weather the storm until we have the vaccine. Absolutely. Uh, but also, uh, okay, uh, we dealt with a story a little while ago about people getting seeds in the mail. At the time, about 250 people had received these seeds in the mail. They're just in a blank envelope and they show up at your house and you can order seeds. seeds. Um, now over 750 people have reported receiving these seeds across Canada. Uh, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency has tested these seeds. They have they're a range of different plant species. Um, they don't think there's anything necessarily toxic in them, but they're asking you, please do not plant these seeds and also take them to your local food inspection agency office mm -hmm. because the, they want to make sure that none of these seeds are planted in Canada and they want to be able to safely dispose of them. Uh, and Canada Post is also investigating this along with the Canada Border Services Agency right. because these packets are not originating inside of Canada. Okay. Uh, these packets have also showed up in America as well. So it's, it's a North America wide thing right now. Um, some of the packets have though, have been traced back to China, but not all of them. So that's where that stands right now. So if you get one of those packs in the mail, don't plant them and just mm -hmm. take them to your local Canada Food Inspection Agency office. Absolutely. And speaking of certain types of things, leaves also that come from seeds, but a different type of leaf in this yes, case. Yes, yes. So just quickly, the Maple Leafs have shown an ability to rebound from tough demoralizing losses this season, but they're going to have to dig deep to respond after what transpired Thursday, and mm. they're going to have to do it fast. <laughs> so they had... <laughs> they got one opportunity. So Col yeah. Columbus came back from a 3-0 deficit to be, uh, beat Toronto 4-3 and take a 2-1 lead in the team's best of five qualifying round series. Uh, they won't have long to dwell on this because they're going to be back at game four tonight at 8 p.m. So this is, uh, yeah. you know, the Leafs have a trend of this. You know, they're very from good at very blowing leads in the third this period. And was, they've been able to do this for decades. I yeah. mean, this, I've, I remember this yeah. decades ago they've been doing it. I mean, I'm, I'm, my team's not even in, but I'm still going to make fun of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a commercial break. We'll be right back with your seven day forecast. Even though we can't always meet in person, we can still listen. Even though schools are closed, help is still available in your community. Even though you may be worried, services and supports are still here. In stressful times like these, families need mental health supports more than ever. We are here to make sure you can stay connected to your community and culture. Nous savons qu'il peut être difficile de rester à la maison, mais vous n'êtes pas seul. And we know 
asking for help for yourself and others can be hard. But there are people in your community who are ready to support you. No matter your age, gender, sexual identity, race, or culture. No matter the day, time, or issue. We're here to help. Welcome back to Special Report for Friday, August 7th. I'm here with Chris Oldcorn and I'm going to get into your Weather Watcher video here. So this one here that's going to come up on your screen, this one is something that producer Mike took, it was actually last year um, during the canoe, uh, if you remember watching our morning shows, um, Tim Murphy did a segment with the canoe, uh, with the, I'm trying to think of their names now. Um, anyhow, there's some good footage there uh, from we're looking at the delta and the pavilion from where you'd see on the pier on the other side of the canal so if you actually walk along that pier so that's a very good shot there uh, different angle if you're not used to seeing that so that's on tv weather at gmail.com you can send in your uh, photos and videos and please include your name and location so i know where you're sending it from otherwise it could be anywhere in the world and i don't know where it is so all right so seven day forecast you're going to see on Saturday that nice day, it's, uh, 27 degrees, some sun. Then we're going to see a change Sunday, Monday, 26 degrees, a uh, chance of thunderstorms and rain. Sun comes back Tuesday and Wednesday, 27 degrees. There's a lot of 27s on there. Thursday, a little higher, 28. And then our lows overnight are between 16 to 18 degrees. So very, very seasonal. So it'll be a, it'll be a good week once we get through that mixed bag, Chris. But uh, you got some news on TikTok. Yes, this is going to be sad news for uh, some younger people, uh, if you live in America anyways. Um, <laughs> Donald Trump, the pro-business president, sure likes to interfere in business. Um, okay, uh, the people who make TikTok, it's a Chinese company called ByteDance. Um, and Donald Trump has had a trade war with China going mm -hmm. back and forth for quite some time. Uh, so 45 days from now, he, he signed what's called an executive order. An executive order is is like a law that the president can do, just like Congress would pass something, yeah. or the Senate would pass something. Right. Um, and he signed, and so in four, it comes into effect in 45 days from now. Okay. And that is that if the TikTok app is not owned by an American company, they will no longer be able to operate in America. He also included another company called WeChat. It's a messenger app, okay. kind of like WhatsApp and, and those sorts of apps. Right. However, WeChat is not very popular in North America. It's I actually even heard very, of it. It, well, it's, it's, most of its users are actually in China. Okay. Uh, it's, it, it's the most widely used messaging app in China, also owned by a Chinese company. Right. Uh, but yeah, both of those in 45 days will not be able to operate in the US unless they're owned by an American company with servers in America. He's worried about the data collection from TikTok. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but we will be back at 10 a.m. today for Doug Ford's press conference with Stephen Lecce and Christine Elliott. Come back here at 10 a.m. and you'll be able to see a repeat of that at 1 p.m. today. Have a great morning. See you then.